Hello, dear viewers. No, just kidding. Hi! <laughs> I'm very excited to have Albert Meyer today here. Thank you, sir, for taking the time. It's my pleasure. Busy schedule and everything. Um, not not today anymore. anymore. Not, not today not anymore. anymore. Done with a huge project now. Recording session. Yeah, extremely um, happy. Yeah. But let's start maybe from the beginning slightly. From so, scratch. From scratch. So uh, maybe can you give us a one minute introduction, kind of how you quickly, you know, you were born, you got to the oboe, and now. <laughs> how did it happen? <laughs> I was born a long time ago, kind of middle ages, and there were still dinosaurs on this planet. And yeah, I'm one of the rare creatures who I've I was riding dinosaurs. We are so lucky today. <laughs> and um, so it doesn't seem, I, I don't seem that old, but I am. And then suddenly I stopped thinking I want to be a knight living a castle. I thought maybe I'd take the oboe. Um, I was actually, I was stuttering, hefty stuttering. And um, it was very hard for me in school. You know, I changed from normal school to middle school. And I couldn't, I could hardly say a normal sentence. I was completely blocked. And then my dad, a, a doctor for children, he decided maybe it would be a good idea to give you an instrument, like a blowing instrument, a wind instrument. And this might help you with your inhibition to speak. Clever. At this time, this was a clever step, and he truly thought it would help me. Um, I would say, you know, in the re retrospective, I would say, of course, it was a lovely thought, but uh, what at the end really helped me was I gained self-confidence with this instrument. That means I was very small, so I was out of the Middle Ages. Um, I was very small when I was 10, smaller than the other children. And then um, I got this instrument because out of pure coincidence, because my dad met one of his patients and the patient said, yeah, I'm the principal oboe or the father of a patient. I'm the principal oboe in the Bamberg Symphony Orchestra, the Bamberg Symphony, Bamberg Symphonic Orchestra. And um, I have this instrument and I'm selling it. It's an old oboe. Oboe? Okay, yeah, just give it to me. I, I buy it for my two boys. And so he came home out of his uh, practice for children. He came home one lunchtime and he presented this instrument to us and said, yeah, um, Middle Ages, you're going to learn this now. And we looked at this instrument. So my older brother, three and a half years older, looked at it and I looked at it and said, okay, what is it? It's an oboe and you're going to learn it. Not for the fireplace. It's not yet for the. <laughs> it's not yet supposed to be something for the fireplace. Anyway, it was his decision. There was no question about it. It was like you're going to learn this instrument. This is it. So this is it. It's like Michael Jackson. This <laughs> is it. And then I'm a big Michael Jackson fan. What a coincidence! And I, I truly adore him. And. Um, yeah, then I thought maybe this could help me. Of course, it didn't help me. It helped just to gain or maybe to regain or to gain for the first time a kind of self-confidence. So I was not one of these happy playing kids uh, about whom everybody says, oh, what a lovely kid, just bring it to the next birthday party. Yeah, what a lovely kid. He looks so nice and he's so nice. He speaks so nice and he's just such a lovely creature, take him with us home. I was not one of these kids. Nobody wanted to take you home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Except in my, your parents. <laughs> in my recollection, in my recollection, even my mom, <laughs> even my mom said in one interview many years ago, she said, you know, some uh, moderator asked her, so how was your child in his youth? And my mom turned to the camera and said, he was a strange kid. <laughs> So this was my upbringing, this was my childhood, so <laughs> All right. he was a strange kid. So I think I was a strange kid, absolutely. Uh, but we have so many strange kids out there, you know, and... Um, it seems like you turn out, you know, darn good, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I have to say, 
why do I tell you this? And this is from the bottom of my heart. It's the absolute truth. I could have invented some story of, of uh, a beautiful, comfortable, cozy family. And I felt so, you know, engulfed by love and pure wisdom. And I could have invented this kind of story, but it wouldn't be true. I appreciate the effort. <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> it wouldn't be true. So I had a... Sorry, Mom, to say this, but I had a not happy childhood. Um, it's not the fault of my mom, absolutely not. But I was not one of these happy kids. And then music came to me. First, through, through the back door, I played a treble recorder. It was more than a treble recorder. And then I played piano. Then I went to the uh, boys' choir, Bamberg's boys' choir, the dorm choir. And this kind of triggered something within my soul and my heart. It, I thought, oh, wow, this masses from Haydn and Mozart and Bach, this, oh, this meant something to me. And then came this idea about this oboe to do something about my stuttering. And then kind of my teacher, Gerhard Scheuer here, he very fast discovered something within me. And despite he said, yeah, you were so small and you couldn't speak and, and all the other students have been so much older than you and after two years you were so much better than all the others. And then, yeah, and actually after three or four years of getting lessons, maybe after three years, the others, they have just stopped because it was, <laughs> it pointless. was, it was <laughs> pointless to go on, you know. They, they have all been in the age of my brother, like three and a half years older, and they looked at this strange little guy, and yeah, but suddenly, you know... Uh, what was it about the oboe? The, what, did you find some passion, or did you like the, the, I don't know, the challenge, you know, that... You know, it was a, as you can imagine, it was an exception in this, in this small town world in Bamberg. Bamberg had 80,000 inhabitants, and it's over a thousand years old. And, you know, if I would have chosen the guitar, the saxophone, the clarinet, the violin, maybe my life would have been different. But I've chosen by coincidence, I didn't choose. It was chosen for me, like my fate, uh, to get the oboe. And the oboe was sought. I mean, everybody needed the oboe in every chamber group, in every orchestra, in every chamber orchestra, in every, you know, everywhere. Oboe was needed badly, and suddenly I was with 12, I was traveling to France, to Italy, to England with my oboe. And I was always together with much older people. And I just recall one time I was, kids just stuff your ears, I was uh, on, the, on the beach of Brighton smoking pot with 12. And because it was normal at this time, you know, for much elder, yeah. elder people, and they said, yeah, give this little strange creature, give it, let him try something. And, and then I was smoking pot, and yeah. I mean, the stuttering just went away. The stuttering... Uh, we do not advise that. This is, this is, don't, <laughs> no, don't. No, no. Drugs is, are no, bad. No, yes, bad. bad. Drugs? Bad. Bad. I hate drugs. There you go. It's, you know, like my friend Donald Trump would say, I hate drugs. Donald, you're absolutely right. And um, I have the tendency to be ironic if you... Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so suddenly, you know, I discovered this step-by-step um, step being needed. That was what changed my life. I was needed and I came back to school and then the teachers took me from one, school, from, from one class to the other to show me off. Mm. Like, you know, like... This is Albrecht. He might be young and... Bow to him. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might have told you the Messiah is still to come. <laughs> Go on your knees. <laughs> so, if, if, in my recollection, maybe, in my memories, it could have been similar, but, of course, in real life. But still, they asked me, like, you know, they put me from one class to the other said, this is Albrecht, he plays the oboe. Albrecht, would you like to play something? And instead of saying something, I played something. And then 
I was I was something suddenly. It was a good feeling, right? I mean, it was a great feeling, yeah. and I admire I, I admire every little creature who, who who has the power and the willpower and the perseverance to pursue this long street, uh, this long walk towards happiness and. I see so many kids on the streets who have not found yet this kind of path. Mm. If I would have a wish free in life, and as we know, we don't have wishes free in life, but if I would have a wish free, like a fairy would come, or, you know, I would wish for every little creature out there who is still suffering and looking for their fulfillment to find this one and only thing. Um, the problem is, we have sometimes to create this, to search for the thing. It doesn't come up to you easily. It doesn't appear, you know, out of a bottle or out of a cage or whatever. You have to search for it. And I was very, very lucky that I found it. And I have to say, maybe I started stuttering when I was eight or nine, but it stopped basically Mainly it stopped uh, when I was 19, mm. so 10 years this accompanied me. And still, you know, I have contacts to the Stuttering Association in Germany. We have an association for everything in Germany, of course. And so the big boss of this Stuttering Association told me, yeah, if you're an adult person, it's very unlikely that you can heal yourself from stuttering. And that's what I truly do not believe because I met several stutterers, many who could cure themselves from stuttering with the lovely help of other people, just to be patient and, and nice to them and everything will turn off well. Are you worried they're gonna take a look at your file now and maybe, you know, <laughs> you don't belong here anymore, you know? <laughs> no, it's just, you know, they, we have made an agreement that I could eventually be one of the raw models mm -hmm. for them. Um, to put on a stand and to say, you know, at it least there is possible, one. Yeah. It is possible. Look at him, and uh, he's got only one problem: he doesn't stop talking. Mm. It was different ten years ago, or twenty years ago, thirty years ago. It was middle ages, anyway. How then you ended up in the Berlin Philharmonic, and now for what twenty-eight years? Yes, twenty-eight years. Principal oboe player. I mean, that is that is something, right? I mean. That's a long time. You have an anniversary coming up now, <laughs> like <laughs> two more years. <laughs> yeah, you know, now I'm 28 years there. I started, I started very early. I was two and a half years old when I started uh, being first, oh, oh, maybe three and a half years. I can't really, it's so long ago. Anyway, I was very young. I was very young when I started off in Berlin, uh, 92 February. I was, I had uh, the big pleasure and uh, the big gift from fate that I could start in Bamberg, in my hometown, most wonderful city, town, which you can imagine. And I started off in the orchestra there, in the Bamberg Symphony Orchestra, as a principal oboe. And then I thought, yeah, I, I've got everything, you know, I can talk, I can speak quite fluent. I have a wonderful job in this fantastic orchestra in my hometown with my friends, my family, everybody, even with my dialect. And then came this idea about going to Berlin to try to do the trial there and uh, the tryout and the so-called, you know, this audition there. And when I got the job, I wasn't comp I was completely unprepared for getting the job there because I didn't expect to be. It's a big change. It's a, it's a huge change. It was the biggest change in my life so far. And uh, I was because I came from this small city. I I had this illusion that if I behaved the same in Berlin, which I could do, could behave in Bamberg. Everything will turn out fine, but this was uh, a grotesque illusion. Mm. So everything, uh, in the first two years of my trial years, I discovered uh, 
the environment of devil and hell, uh, black magic, uh, it was pure hell. The first two years, um, you could say, one could say, I, I let it, I let it do, I let them do it with me. Uh, but very often I considered the, the idea to go back to Bamberg. But then suddenly one fine day after two years they discovered they, they wanted me. So they, you know, after trial years they... The devil had played enough with you and said, oh, okay. Is that, I gave him some real kick, kick yeah. ass and... Um, he's ours. Yeah. He's ours. Yeah, he did. No, no, he's my hero, Satan, you know, I obey <laughs> Satan now and I sold my soul to him and since then life turns out to be really super. Irony, irony, irony. Hi, irony. Satanists. <laughs> I'm there for you. Um, uh, ironic, did I say something about that? And um, no, actually I came to, to uh, contradict this. Uh, I come from a Catholic family truly believers and I was playing for the Pope four times, Pope Benedict and uh, even Pope Franciscus asked me already once, I, it didn't turn out because I had no time, but so um, yeah to all believers out there make yourself happy. Yeah so that you know tells you something when um, the oboe player is more busy than the Pope and you know you've done some things right in life. <laughs> I mean, I applaud you. I applaud you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> this, this might have come, come out the wrong way. It was no, just... No. <laughs> I mean, I had only one date as a proposal from, from his entourage and I couldn't on this date. So this was... <laughs> the Pope is definitely more busy than I am. I'm very busy, but he's much more busy. I don't know, I mean, I'm having an interview with him tomorrow, so he seemed very flexible. No, just kidding, yes. <laughs> I got ironic. Yes, yes. This is the ironic channel. <laughs> um, so is there something maybe you can... Yeah, like you said for the kids, you know, for the little creatures to grab on and to hold on to something. But what about, you know, later now in life? I mean, the world has changed, I think, you know, a lot. And, and the music industry as well. What is it now that maybe you could tell the students, you know, how to, I don't know, keep motivated, keep doing it? Um, is it, you know, <laughs> a marketing thing now these days more, uh, you know? Okay, we had this issue uh, when I talked to, the, uh, to his colleagues in the orchestra, uh, we had this issue just upcoming and I have to say, of course life changed a lot, but, uh, you know, in a review, maybe after two years from now on, we are going to discover that this year was a piece of shit for everybody and especially at places like the US and Mexico, France, Spain, Italy. It was affecting them so severely and uh, I feel extremely moved by all the loss of these fantastic people. Um, and, but just to speak for my musician fellow fellows, um, just keep there, keep trying, and for all the, the musicians who have no fixed job, no fixed salary, I know it's extremely difficult in this, in this year, and I wish you all the best, and, and keep my fingers crossed um, that you find some way of surviving this, because we have no concerts, no nothing. Um, yeah, I think, uh, to speak to the students again, I think if you, uh, when I was young, <clears throat> as I said, middle ages, when I was young, um, it was normal that somebody said, yeah, you know, I'm practicing 10 hours a day, like the piano players. And then the violin player would say, yeah, I'm practicing six hours a day. And then the oboe players said, okay, let me try to work for four or five hours a day, what I did. Nowadays, students come to me and say, Oh, maestro, I was working so much yesterday. I couldn't do any more. I just did it till my embouchure lost me. 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Nearly 40 minutes. And then I was so exhausted. I had to play around with my 
mobile phone and then I go out to, because just to relax a little bit. So, you know, when I was young, uh, life was very, very different. There was no video, believe it or not. No video, no internet. God, how could we survive? How are you? Yeah, no, it, believe it. Yeah, <laughs> dinosaurs. No internet. Can you think about that? No internet is like having no air to breathe. Yeah. Like, what no. do you do in that time? <clears throat> I guess practice more, you know? Practicing. Practicing. I have a wonderful colleague, he said, at this time he said, scales very early in the morning are the most wonderful task to start the day. At this time we all considered him to be completely out of his mind, but now, after all these years, I have to say, he was so right. What a wise man. <laughs> a very wise man. Tone, vocalises and scales. One hour tone studies, one hour scales. And then start the day with practicing. So no 40 minutes, one and a half hours. You know, no. So really hard work because we need it. We need it and you will need it. In this we crazy time. It. We all need it. So, uh, my final question, what we'll, what we'll all come here, you know, to discover today. Um, you're big into cycling. Mm. Cycling, yeah. <laughs> I have a little collection of, of uh, bikes and um, unfortunately I was so proud of these bikes that I showed my bikes to everybody and then one of my high-end bikes kind of disappeared. Oh. <laughs> I came home and I have them all in a, like a stored in a row and then my one of my green beautiful high-end bike. It had this carbon um, rims. carbon thingy. No car um, it was not a normal chain. It was a ah okay. It was this uh, like, like a, a belt. Like a, yeah. It's the belt. Oh yes. I, I know the system. Yeah, yeah. this belt system mm -hmm. and it was just it was fantastic. It disappeared. And then uh, I bought a beautiful used bike from Colnago, mm. uh, a Tour de France bike. Um, and uh, it's very difficult. Addictive. It's addictive <laughs> and very difficult. Very difficult because once you're clicking and <laughs> you're caught, it's, it's like devil, you know. He <laughs> <laughs> And I just recall the first time I went on the track um, for two hours, I came back and I went sick <laughs> because I was doing too much, yeah. too much. Because you can just like, it's like, it. yeah, it's adrenaline. But, then it's adrenaline. but I have to say, um, the next day I went on, on this bike, um, the next day when I recovered, I went on the bike again and I went through the Potsdam Chaussee, so a really huge, huge alley. And I went to this, poof, 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 poof. and then I discovered uh, a senior uh, sitting on a pimped e-bike hmm. in an upright position, passing me with a <laughs> smile in his face. Don't uh, you hate that? <laughs> I, I, I was going something like 40, uh, he was going something like 60, <laughs> and he looked at me like this, you know, this upright position. Yeah. Right? Like, what are you struggling with? Well, What's going well, on? We're like, don't, 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 don't. He was like, <laughs> he was like, <laughs> and don't you hate that? I mean, is this, yeah, there's a, the, the one drop. Yeah. Do, do, don't you hate that? I mean, this the pimped e bikes who can go 80. I mean, that come is. on, guys, this can't be, this can't be serious. And it's safe, for that I mean, matter. Of course, it's not safe anyway, of course. I mean, if, if then for the senior, of course, I have a helmet mm. and I have a M-E-T helmet, specially made for me, M-E-T. It has this uh, protection here for my mouth. Yeah, so normal helmet and then here, M-E-T, the best helmet in the world, would my friend Donald Trump say, the best. And. Um, yeah, M E T. Did I mention yeah. M E T? M -E -T. T M M E T. Wow, that's fantastic. It is that's really fantastic. good. Because safety, 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 safety first. I have a colleague. Uh, I think he plays in the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra. First clarinet. 
he was into bikes, uh, bikes and he had not an MET helmet. I don't get money for this. <laughs> MET helmet. And he was, uh, had an um, incident, an accident, and, boom, and he lost all his teeth. Mm. And they had to be reinstalled. Re <laughs> so helmet is everything. And I'm a, I'm a motorbike driver as well. Oh, motorbike. Yeah. I just got on a, a new Ducati. Oh. New to cut it. So Night. you wake up very late in the morning, you know, like eh, 15 minutes till work starts. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a monster bike. My, it's not mine, it's from my brother, but it's beautiful and he let me use it. He has my sports car, I have, have this Ducati. Fair trade. And, Fair trade. and uh, is a complete, it's, uh, it's so light. It's, it's really a very light bike, all in red and beautiful and it's really very dangerous very dangerous so again no drugs and safe driving exactly sir thank you very it much it was my pleasure great channel this was ironic channel from ironic. now on yeah. <laughs> from now i'm gonna have to put like banners on like yeah, bad, bad, bad. like <laughs> bad 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 boo <laughs> so when, when I say the name, the name is yep. a bird. Exactly. Yeah. Done. Thank you. Ciao.